Glory be to God. I need you to stand with me, please. Amen. I just want to shift to the anointing that the Spirit wants to minister to us through tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want us to set our minds upon the God we serve and who he is. Amen. And I want you to ready your spirit for the word of God. For the Bible tells us that the word is life to all who finds it. Amen. And it is health to their flesh. Amen. Amen. We are getting change of governments and change of politicians. And everybody comes with their own ideologies and plans to make life better. But Jesus Christ is still the answer for the world today. Amen. 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 So I want you to sing with me and worship that, that chorus. Awesome God. How great thou art. You are God and mighty are your miracles. And I just don't want you to sing it. I want you to worship because we want that kind of anointing that is necessary for the move of God. Here in the sanctuary and those of you on Facebook, on YouTube, or whenever you may hear this word that you may know that God is awesome. Amen. Amen. Awesome God. How great thou art, you are God, and mighty are your miracles, a standing all of your holy name. Lord, we bow and worship you. Come on together, let me hear you. Awesome God, how great the Lord. You are God, and mighty are your miracles. We stand in awe of your holy name. Lord, we bow and worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I don't know what you're looking for on your phones unless you're looking for the lyrics. The lyrics. The lyrics. Huh? I don't know it. Oh, well, you don't know the singer? No, no, no. Awesome God, how great thou art. You are God. And mighty are your miracles. We stand in awe of your holiness. Lord, we bow and worship you. Come on and go there, the Holy Ghost. Awesome God. How sing in the spirit Amen. not just sing because you have a voice I want you to sing in the spirit Amen. for the Bible tells us that God inhabits the praises of his Amen. people and those are lying are, are dependent on the anointing in this sanctuary and those who would hear this word after is dependent upon the anointing so I want you now to begin to sing and to worship God in the spirit that that glory that is necessary to come into the temple will come are you following me in the Holy Ghost amen, amen. awesome God come on and tell him how great thou art tell him again you you are God, mighty are your miracles. I stand in awe of your holy name. Come on in the spirit, hallelujah. Lord, we bow and worship you. Awesome. 
awesome God, hallelujah. Awesome God, how great thou art. You are God, mighty are your miracles. We stand in awe of your holy name. Lord, we Sure, 
and your expectation will not be cut off. Hallelujah. Amen. My God, I wish I was preaching to a church uh, that understood what God is saying. He says, do not let your heart envy sinners, for surely there is a future, and your expectation will not be cut off. Hallelujah. You see, verse 18 of the text is an irrevocable promise from God to those whose faith and trust and hope is in him alone. That they will have the future they were promised by him and are in expectation of from him. God is promising that the future that he said he would give to you in his word or what he spoke to you about by his spirit, that it shall come to pass in the name of Jesus Christ. He cannot change his mind and he will not change his mind because he said, if I said it, I will do it. And if I purpose it, I will bring it to pass. Yes. David confirms what his son Solomon says in the text. In Psalm 23, verse 2, where he declares, God makes me to lie down in green pastures. Amen. David described his expected future that had become a reality after years of persecution and wilderness wanderings and in need of water and food to relax in or lying down in green pastures. For he likened his blessings from the Lord to that of flocks surrounded by abundance while lying down peacefully on luxuriant grass and feeding on the overflowing fullness of the best grasses, fully fed, satisfied, and contented because all their wants had been completely supplied by their shepherd. Hallelujah. Jesus is the good shepherd of the church. So as a former shepherd who took care of flock and cattle, he understood what it is like when you find green grass and good grass and healthy grass and to see your sheep lying down in it great in it, getting up and eating and satisfied and still there is more glory to God and so he says God makes me to lie down in green pastures in other words he says when your future become a reality according to the scripture for surely there is a future and your expectation will not be cut off he wants you to know it's the best of the best it's the grand de la Prima. Nothing can compare to the future that God has prepared for us individually and as a church. Even though we all know that the promises of God are yes, yes, and amen. As we approach 2022, with threats of another strain of the disease, extended financial difficulties, along with the other challenges that are sparing many of us in the face. There are those of you who are worried and are wondering when things are going to change and how soon is life going to get to, to life going to become normal or get better for you. But since we are incapable of changing our circumstances, Jesus admonishes us in Matthew 6:27 not to worry or focus on the things that are seen yeah. since our heavenly father knows of our needs and distresses and will provide and deliver at the appointed time Amen. you should never be able to find a believer in the house of god in any religious christian church in any part of the earth that is worried about tomorrow oh, yeah. or worried about the future Amen. Amen. or worried about what the scientist says about prolonging of the disease because if the bible tells us that God will shorten the days for the elect's sake so that we will not be captured by the deception of the antichrist the God you serve is the God that has a deadline on this assignment like the angel of the, of the destroying angel was about to touch Judah and Jerusalem. God in his compassion and mercy said, enough 
is enough. And there's a date set on God's divine calendar when God will say enough is enough. I want you to know that our presidents and prime ministers, our governors and mayors don't run this world. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. He created it by the word of his power and set everything in orbit. And he is in control. And when God says enough is enough, enough is enough. And so we are not to worry. We are not to be perplexed. We are not to be oppressed and confused and anxious and have anxiety. We are to continue to look to God who is in control. And he promised that he will not destroy the righteous with the wicked. He promised to preserve our going out and our coming in. He promised and he cannot deny himself. It doesn't matter what they say. I listen to a little news and then enough becomes enough. I read the word. I look to God. You know, before those people who brief us on a daily basis come on our local news challenge, news challenge, channels uh, to tell us what is going on. Uh, they meet in a room uh, and all the scientists and statisticians and medical people uh, and everybody sit down and discuss uh, and then they come to a consensus decision uh, as to what they're going to tell you and I. Uh, yes. And we sit down and we suck in all of that yes. uh, when you've got an altar that you shall go before to hear from the Prince of Peace, uh, the God of all knowledge, uh, the God of all wisdom and understanding, uh, the omniscient God who knows everything uh, and get your briefing from the Holy Ghost uh, that you might live a peaceable life. Uh, let God tell you what to do. Uh, let God give you the correct information uh, because he doesn't lie and he does not deceive. So Jesus tells us don't worry because you can't do nothing about it. Your heavenly father knows what you need uh, and he will take care of every circumstance. Uh, Paul tells us uh, to walk by faith and not by sight in 2 Corinthians 5, 7. To walk by faith means that you understand that faith is the evidence of things not seen. In other words, as the Amplified Virgin puts it, faith is the title deeds. So whenever you have faith, you have the title deeds. So let me read it again. Faith is the evidence of things not seen or the title deeds. For by faith or having the title deeds, the elders obtain a good report. In other words, to walk by faith means you are not looking at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. And so walking and living by faith is how you get the good report like the elders. It's how you get the testimony. It's how you get the blessing. It's how you get your future. It's how you get your expected end. I understand the importance of employment uh, and the necessity of employment. Uh, but there are those of us uh, that God don't have to give you a job to give you a house. Uh, he's a miracle working God. Uh, God don't have to give you lots of money uh, to clear your debt uh, or the gold and the silver. Is his. Uh, he's a God of miracles. Uh, I am preaching with imbalance. I'm not talking uh, about foolishness now. Uh, but I'm talking about when you know the God that you serve and you walk by faith. He's your source. He's your provider. He's your way maker. Then you know that everything is going to be alright for you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. When you have faith, you have the title deeds. All of us, whether we own the property, or we are renting, or we are residing in the home of someone, you've got keys to open that door. And as long as you have those keys, it gives you a confidence that you have somewhere to live, that the door will open before you and close behind you. When you have faith, you have the title deeds to the things that you are praying to God about. Are you hearing me today, tonight, in the name of Jesus Christ? As long 
long as you have faith, you are in ownership of that that you are talking to God about. Whether you are asking God to protect you in a time like this, whether you are believing God for the car note or the insurance to drive the vehicle, whether you are believing God for the money to clear the student loan debt, whether you believe in God for healing in the name of Jesus Christ, as long as you have faith, sister Anita, you've got the title deeds to the miracle that God has performed in your body. Medicine doesn't understand the might of God if they don't see atoms and if they don't see formulas and they can't understand it, then to them it does not exist. But he that comes to God must believe that he is and he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. We don't have to see it. We just know it in our innermost being. We don't have to touch it. We just know it is done. Because of God we serve. He says, I am Jehovah Rapha. I am the God that he lives in. Hallelujah. Glory. I am that I am. Hallelujah. And the believer walks by faith. He's not envious and jealous of the sinner's seeming success. Amen. He does not covet his neighbor's house, Amen. his neighbor's vehicle, yes, his neighbor's wife or husband, Amen. his neighbor's hopes help or nanny, Amen. his neighbor's ox or donkey, or anything that his neighbor has. But he's contented with what he has. While being focused on God's promise in Jeremiah 31, 70, which says, there is hope in your future, says amen, the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. When you understand, literally understand, that in spite of where you live and what you have and what may be your meal tomorrow, that you are still on the winning side and you are still on the best side. When you understand that God has already prepared for you exceeding and abundantly, you don't have to covet what other people have because a lot of what people got, they didn't get it by fair gain. If you only knew how they got it, you will be amazed. And some people live in fear of losing what they have. But when God give it to you, when you get it the right way, when you get it by righteousness, when you know you study for the degree, you don't have to fail fear being recalled and say, listen, somebody did this. When you know you did the thesis, you don't have to worry about plagiarism. When you know you study, you can boast that you've been blessed by God to have real credentials. When God opens the door, no man can close it. Amen. Sometimes the door may be opened by nepotism or favoritism or because who's your friend? But I like it when God do it because when he sets before you an open door, just walk on because God is the one that is doing it. Amen. So the Bible tells us don't envy sinners. Don't envy anyone. Doesn't matter what they're driving or where they live or, or who you work for and all the wealth and the luxury you see that they have. God says don't envy that. Right. The prophet Asaph is a prime example of a believer who did exactly what Solomon said not to do in verse 17 of the text. He says, do not let your heart envy sinners. Asaph was a Levite. He was a musical composer and one of the chief leaders and musicians of David's choir. He sounded the cymbals before the Ark of the Covenant when it moved from the house of Obed-Edom to Jerusalem. He is mentioned along with David as skilled in music as well as being an inspired seer, which meant he had he was at a level beyond prophecy. He actually saw things in the realm of the spirit as the Lord would open up his eyes. But it came a point in time in his life uh, that he became envious of sinners. Uh, and so this makes known uh, that there are leaders and believers uh, who do lose their faith and trust and hope in God from time to time uh, when they walk by sight and not by faith. Yes, 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 yes. When they're not willing to wait uh, until when God is ready to bless them. Uh, and so Esau was this kind of person. But he began 
to envy the sinners. And so he starts out Psalm 73 by saying, uh, Truly God is good to Israel, to such as are pure in heart or especially to those who live holy. So he acknowledges God's goodness. In other words, Esau had knowledge of the truth written in Psalm 84, 11. No good thing will God withhold from them uh, that walk uprightly. He was also privy to what David wrote in Psalm 31, verse 90. Oh, how great is thy goodness, which thou hast laid up for them that fear thee, which thou hast wrought for them that trust in thee before the sons of men. Psalm 68, 10. You, O oh God, provided from your goodness for the poor. He was privy to all this. But when he looked at what the sinners had, when he looked at what the, the, the wicked had, it affected his walk with God. Yeah. So it is clear from his opening statement that Asaph was cognizant of the goodness of God to the Jews from the calling of Abraham to the present. And so he continues. He remember he starts by saying, truly God, to good, truly God is good to Israel, to such as are pure in heart. So he acknowledges that. But then he says, but as for me, yeah, I my feet almost stumble. Yeah. My steps nearly slip. Yeah. Why? Mm -hmm. Why did Asaph almost walk away from God or backslide? He was an inspired seer. He was playing music before the presence of God yes. as it entered yes. into the gates of yes. Jerusalem. Yes. Open up ye everlasting yes. doors uh, and let the king yes. of glory come in. Yes. He was a prophet of God. Yes. He wasn't a, 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 a rookie believer. Yes. He was a solid yes. established yes. man of God yes. in the kingdom of God. Yes. He had status, yes. ecclesiastical status in, in the system that David had set for the worship of God and how the Levite should honor God but yet he's saying I almost backslide that's yeah, what he's saying yeah, in everyday language yeah, yeah. in spite of Asaph's knowledge and recognition of God's goodness his faithfulness mm -hmm. his integrity and his just recompense on all unfairness and evil he had allowed the nefarious practices of the sinner to affect his walk with God yeah. that is why he said uh, my feet almost stumble my steps nearly slip Lord have mercy he goes on to give further insight yes. As to why his steps had nearly slipped, he said, I was envious of the foolish. Mm. The word foolish there referred to sinners, people who didn't want God, who had completely rejected the one true God, and who took pride in themselves uh, or boasted of ownership of their status and elevation in life uh, with all its special privileges and benefits. In other words, these people were walking around uh, and they were saying, I'm responsible responsible for my greatness. Uh, I'm re responsible for the notoriety I have. God didn't do this. God didn't do anything for me. He says, I became envious of them. These people were arrogant like the Moses Pharaoh dealt with who said to him, who is the Lord that I should obey his voice to let Israel go? I do not know the Lord nor will I let Israel go. Or they were like King Nebuchadnezzar who said, it's not this great Babylon that I have built for royal dwelling by my mighty power and for the honor of my majesty. They did not care about God but they had everything going on as far as his eyes could my see. God, my God, yeah, yeah. My God, Asaph, yeah. the anointed seer and prophet of God, had forgotten that every man and nation who had ever rejected God and boasted in their own strength and notoriety and wealth eventually became impoverished yeah. and unimportant. Yeah. He had seen God humble the Philistines, yeah. the Moabites, and the Edomites before his eyes during David's reign, and how God had exalted the Jews or the former poor Hebrew slaves to the highest position of power and notoriety in the region uh, gave them wealth, uh, the overflowing fullness of all they needed to eat and drink uh, for bodily nourishment uh, and the land of Canaan as their permanent possession. Uh, yet he said he envied the foolish. Yeah, yeah. God had given 
than them more. But he's looking at people that are walking around and boasting in themselves. And so let me stupidly envy those who don't want God and who disown God. Those in the Illuminati and the atheists and the agnostics. Let me envy them and are not contented with what the Lord has presently provided for us and no longer have any expectation of the reality of the goodness of God, which make of richer or our future, there's every possibility that we will end up in want of God's provision. The moment you start to doubt your delay yourself, are you hearing me? The moment you start to doubt, your clock isn't going tick, 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 tick. It stops. There's no need to envy the wicked. It just shows you that he was living in a land flowing with milk and honey. He was serving before the very presence of God. And he allowed what he saw with his eyes uh, to cause him to say, uh, My feet almost slip. I almost walked away out of the pulpit. Uh, like many leaders are doing. Uh, and many ministry leaders, uh, they walked away. They've, not, they've allowed uh, the demon God of COVID uh, to pull them out of the presence of God. To pull them in a bed, to pull them in a movie um, cinema. Many people are getting vaccinated. Uh, just to enjoy life, the carnality of life. Uh, not to be present in the house of God. Uh, the Lord says in 1 John 2, 15 to 17, He says, do not love the world uh, or the things in the world. Uh, for the world is passing away. Uh, but he, do, he who does uh, the will of God abides forever. God is saying uh, in the inspired scriptures. Uh, hallelujah. In the inerrant scriptures. Uh, he said don't love the world. Uh, don't love the things of the world. Uh, he said this world is passing away. Uh, the church has forgotten heaven. Uh, they've forgotten uh, that in the city of heaven uh, the new Jerusalem uh, we're going to walk on streets of gold. Uh, we're going to walk two gates of pearls. Uh, there's a tree of life uh, that bear all manner of fruit uh, and there's a river that flows uh, from the throne of God the Father, no more sun, no more moon. Jesus Christ will finally light up this world with the glory of who He is as the one true and the living God. Hallelujah. The writer of Hebrews admonish us, cast not away our confidence, which has a great recompense of reward. Another translation says, do not throw away your confidence. It will be richly rewarded. Listen to me, saints of God. There's nothing Justin Bieber has that you need. There's nothing that is going on down Times Square that you need to be a part of. What you really need is in the house of God, in the presence of the Lord. There's fullness of joy, and at his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. It's a joy of speak of all, and full of glory. It's a lasting joy. This joy doesn't end when the ball hits the ground. It continues even beyond the grave into eternity. Glory be to Jesus. Love not the world or the things of the world, but love Jesus. Hallelujah. When we were singing, I'm not sorry. I've answered the master call. It brought back memories to me. I remember going to a church with a whole lot of old women inside there. And my God, they got happy on their symbols. And I fell in love with that stanza. I'm not sorry. I've answered the master's call. Hallelujah. I'm on the glory road. I'm on the road of blessing. I'm on the road of prosperity. I'm on the road of goodness and mercy that is following me. I'm on the road of abundance. I'm on the road of health and strength. I'm on the road of wealth. It doesn't matter what other road people are going on. I don't want to be on the road to Niagara Falls. I don't want to be on the road to the Tatna Hall. The Bible tells us those broad, broad roads. 
Hallelujah. I call Jesus to make me happy. I am sure of my future. It doesn't matter who talk. Let them talk what they want to talk. Let them laugh if they want to laugh. Let them call me stupid. But it's the wisest decision I have ever made in my life. I've got everything I need to make me happy. I've got Jesus Christ to show me the way. Hallelujah. History records what the wealthy and renowned Alexander the Great told his generals on his deathbed. He said, Throw all of my gold, my silver, and riches on the path to the graveyard. So the others will know that not even a fraction of gold will come with me. He said, I spent all my life with greed for power, earning riches, but cannot take anything with me. Let people realize that it is a sheer waste of time to chase after wealth. You see, he wasn't going after the pearl of great price. I love that parable where a man, he had so much wealth, and he went into a field one day, and he just saw one pearl and he saw the mansion he saw the Bentley's he saw his Macy's he saw everything he had he said because I want this feel that has this one pearl and that's typology for Jesus Christ my God of mercy I've got the pearl of great price hallelujah he's the lily of the valley people in the rose of Sharon many people are getting dead to get all kinds of you know hard to find different kinds of species uh, of flowers and foliage uh, but I've got the lily of the valley uh, I've got the rose of Sharon hallelujah hallelujah he's the brighter morning star uh, Alexander went on to say uh, I want my hands uh, to be dangling out of the coffin uh, I wish people to know uh, that I came into the world empty handed uh, hallelujah and empty handed I am going out of the world uh, and with these words uh, Alexander closed his eyes and died. Tell me what is there for you to be jealous of. Because you can't buy a coach bag. Because you can't drink champagne. Because you can't drive a Lexus. Because you can't live in a $500,000 life. Alexander the Great was great, great, great. He was wealthier than anyone you can think now. He says, I spent all my life with greed for power, riches. And I got it. And now I am tired with nothing. Glory be to Jesus. We've got everything. Jesus tells us in Luke 16, 25, that Abraham said to the rich man who rejected God and had everything he wanted in this life, Abraham says, son, remember your lifetime you received your good things. And likewise, Lazarus, discomfort and distresses. But now he's comforted and you are tormented. I'm coming out on the better end. I'm like Lazarus tonight. I don't have all the accoutrements that people brag. I'm both saying, uh, I don't have no red bottom shoes uh, unless I get a crayon or some ketchup. Uh, I'm put to the bottom of my shoes, uh, but I'm coming out on the better end. Uh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Uh, a robe of white, uh, a crown of gold, uh, a harp of home, uh, a mansion fear, uh, a victor's palm, uh, and a joy on gold. Uh, and my men, I get there. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. Uh, I am coming out of uh, the, uh, the better end. Uh, there is hope in your future. Yeah. God's word to you tonight is surely there's a future and your expectation will not be cut off. Uh, we have a guarantee from God uh, that in this present world, uh, God will see, uh, God, the godly will see uh, and receive the goodness of God. Uh, the word goodness is an all-encompassing word uh, because it includes everything you need, uh, even down to the smallest uh, or the most in insignificant thing, uh, like a lollipop, whatever you need. Uh, the goodness of God is all-inclusive. 
whatever, whatever you need, however great, however small in this life, we have a guarantee that those who trust God, those who live holy, those whose faith is in God, and those who are still expecting will see the goodness of God. Luke 1 45 says, Blessed is she, blessed is he that believed, for there shall be a performance of the things which were told to her or to him from the Lord. There's a blessing, God. God is saying there's a blessing upon the life of the believer when you believe, when you hear what God has said to you. Because the Bible tells us, or matter of fact, the scripture is saying, when you believe, there's a performance. The same way you doubt, there's no performance. Blessed is she. Blessed is she that believe. What are you believing God for? God says if you believe and you keep on believing, there shall be a performance. Oh, I give God glory. I give God glory. I have a guarantee. I believe the report of the Lord. Although I look right, I can't understand some things. But I believe, Sister Yannick, there shall be a performance in the name of Jesus Christ. I believe, Brother Kevin Shabbat, I believe, as long as you believe, you must expect a performance. But God says, blessed she or he that believe, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. Hallelujah. Not from the false prophet. Not from Channel 7 or Fox 5. From the Lord. Psalm 23 verses 1 and 5 says, Because the Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. My cup overflows. The Hebrew meaning of the word overflow is satisfaction. To fill and satisfy. Wealthy. Overflowing with wealth. This is David that is talking. In other words, an overflowing cup speaks of excessive abundance which goes beyond the mere supply of the common everyday needs and necessities of life that are prepared for the child of God. I like the word excessive abundance. Have you ever asked a person for five dollars and then they give you two hundred dollars? You go, oh my God, oh my God. That's what excessive abundance look like. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Have you ever been expecting bonus? And you said if the give me two thousand dollars uh, I'll be satisfied uh, and then when you look it says ten thousand uh, that's excessive abundance uh, that's what God is saying uh, there shall be a performance uh, an excessive abundance uh, hallelujah to fill and satisfy uh, overflowing with wealth uh, satisfaction hallelujah David is letting us know in his statement my cup overflows uh, that Jehovah the all sufficient one uh, was exceeded and was excessively liberal towards him uh, in his goodness and kindness uh, that he gave him uh, exceedingly abundantly above all that he promised him uh, and more than enough of what he asked God for and thought of. Amen. Amen. God gave him exceedingly abundantly above all that he had promised David and then on top of that it was more than enough for what he asked God for yes. and thought of. Yes. So however big or lawfully, whatever amounts David thought of, God went far beyond that exceedingly come on, come on. and abundantly. Surely there's a future and your expectation will not be cut off. We didn't come here tonight uh, to pray, you know, with some kind of weak timid faith uh, that Omri Khan or whatever it is called, Delta, whoever COVID-19, whatever else they may call it, uh, we are not here timid, uh, hopeless. Right. Right. The Bible says, blessed is he or she that believe, uh, for there will be a performance uh, of the things told him. Asaph goes on to speak. He said, not only had my feet almost stumbled, he said, I almost stopped believing in God. Mm. He said, when I saw the prosperity of the wicked, or those who were in possession of every temporal comfort, they were not suffering. They didn't have troubles like those who trusted in God. They didn't have 
problems like other people. Yeah. They were always at ease and getting richer. Yeah. They were pampered with luxurious living yeah. and they had more than their hearts could wish for. Yeah. They bragged loftily about owning everything money yeah. could buy. Yeah. They were proud yeah. and they were healthy and strong. Yeah. Asaph was also angry mm -hmm. at the fact that the wicked had access to the finest crops. Yeah. While well, the poor ate whatever was made available to them uh, from gleaning the edges of fields uh, and vineyards or by selling their material possessions uh, or inheritance to buy food. The man of God was hurt, yeah. mm -hmm. discouraged, yes. and downcast yes. over the success of the wicked yes. and had allowed it to affect his faith yes. in God yes. to honor his word to uphold the cause of the oppressor and to give food to the hungry. Yes. He began to lose his faith in God. Yes. He no longer had any confidence in God and his word to do what God said he would do. He had forgotten that God has a set time to strip the proud and the wicked as he had done to Donny Bezek. Yes. Hallelujah. When he was captured by, by Joshua's men, his thumbs, hallelujah, were cut off and his big toes were cut off. And he said, listen, 70 kings with their thumbs and big toes cut off, used to gather scraps under my table. He says, as I have done, so God has repaired me. And he was brought to Jerusalem and he died. Donnie Bezek had riches. He lived in luxury he had everything his heart desired he owned every material thing he wanted and he had the best to eat and to drink but it ended because Acts 17 31 says God has set a day when he will judge the wicked Amen. I am sure that there are many believers who look at billionaires making luxury voyages to the moon and back it's the new thing now to go to the moon and back hallelujah listen i'm spending my money on earth i'm gonna see the moon on that great getting up morning i'm gonna pass by the sun and the moon and the sun will burn me and the moon will chill me i'm gonna pass by all the planets as a matter of fact i'm even going to bypass the second heaven where principalities i powers and spiritual wickedness uh, and the rulers of the darkness of this world dwell uh, and they can't hold me back hallelujah and no power can tie me down uh, because I'm going to be caught up uh, the Bible tells us of uh, Jesus uh, will appear in the heavens uh, and the trumpet shall sound uh, and we shall be caught up uh, in divine power and authority uh, this mortal will put on immortality uh, I'm going to bypass everything uh, the tallest building in Dubai bye bye Whatever, Mount Everest, my guy. I'm going to go past everything and I'm going to enter into the heaven where my God dwells. Hallelujah. I'm not bothered by that. That's a cheap trip. Hallelujah. The best is yet to come. We look at wealthy politicians who are constantly passing down uh, generational wealth of millions of dollars uh, and properties and businesses uh, to their children and grandchildren. Uh, millionaires driving their Bentleys and Cadillacs uh, and sports cars on vacation in uh, on their luxury yachts. Uh, teenage celebrities uh, making millions yearly and buying million dollar mansions, uh, shopping and traveling the world. Uh, those with their doctoral degrees uh, making five and seven figure salaries uh, enjoying a lot of the finer things in life uh, and we think to, to ourselves or they think to themselves uh, if God really loves me and it's my provider why am I the one struggling financially uh, at some point in time uh, in your Christian growth uh, you might have asked the question uh, when you look at the wicked on the job uh, and what they're driving uh, and they're going on vacation uh, and you can't even drive to Connecticut because uh, you can't afford the gas uh, and we think to ourselves uh, my 
my God, what are you doing for me? You get vacation, and all you did was scrub the floor, and scrub down the bathroom, and make it clean, clean, wash the same sheets, and put it back on the bed, and they tell you they were sleeping on Martha's short pillows, and all this kind of stuff, and they had turned down service, an all-inclusive hotel, my God, but let not your heart be troubled, David lets us know what we are seeing isn't anything new, he said he's seen the prosperity of the wicked uh, and their end he says in Psalm 37 uh, verse 34 to 36 uh, he said wait on the Lord uh, and keep his way uh, and he shall insult you uh, to inherit the land uh, wait on the Lord keep his way that means live holy and in due time uh, God will prosper you hallelujah he says uh, when the wicked are cut off uh, you shall see it he says I have seen the wicked in great power and spreading out like a, a native green tree or a bear tree hallelujah he said yet uh, he passed away his prosperity came to an end uh, I behold uh, he was no more indeed I sought him but he could not be found David said listen uh, prosperity and greatness is nothing new uh, I've seen businesses spread out like Amazon uh, I've seen uh, businesses spread out like UPS uh, and all these businesses uh, that are making billions of dollars uh, he said to nothing new but after a while it came to an end whatever happened it came to an end that's why God says don't envy don't envy what the wicked has it doesn't have anything to it that guarantees it will last forever Hallelujah. Amen. you see sometimes what we call prosperity is really pending judgment let me say that again sometimes what we call prosperity Israeli pending judgment. I remember years ago when my son was 11. Oh gosh, it was so hard financially. I could feel it. I could feel the burden and the weight of wanting to be a good mother. Get a child in school every day, lunch money and bus fare. You know, mommy, 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 children think mommy is Jesus. Mommy, mommy, mommy. And I remember crying out to God about the father. And at that time, the father had businesses. He had a warehouse. He had all kinds of uh, cosmetics and supermarkets. He was going on up like the Jeffersons. And I began to cry out to God. And I said, God, he would have helped with all the money he has. He wouldn't help. God is prospering and he's doing well. Uh, and the Lord told me, he says, uh, I cannot destroy anything that is not built up. Uh, and just like this, Sam, uh, you can go to my country. Uh, you can't find the supermarket. Uh, you can't find the beauty supplier. Uh, you can't find him nowhere where he was. Because uh, when God is ready to judge the wicked, I want you to understand that sometimes what we call prosperity is really God's pending judgment. God will pull a load of wicked to drive a Bentley only to give them an electric scooter to be scooting down the same road while you're coming up even on the train you're in a better position from a Bentley to that is worse. God's words to you tonight is surely there's a future. Your expectation will not be cut off. As God took care of Naomi. Naomi and her husband and sons took her what little they had. And they went to Moab and she lost everything. And when she came back to Bethlehem, which means the house of bread, she had no money and no means of feeding herself. But God came through for Naomi to her daughter-in-law Ruth uh, by giving their marriage to Boaz uh, she got the kingsman redeemer blessing uh, and in the end uh, hallelujah both Ruth and Naomi uh, had more than they could eat uh, could you imagine uh, at the end of a vineyard uh, pulling scraps uh, a string bean that is left over a strawberry you know that is barely budding uh, and days later uh, you're the mistress of the manor you've got servants now giving you the best of grains, uh, the best of wine uh, whatever you need to eat or drink, uh, we've got to hold on to the end, uh, we've got to trust God no matter
matter what. God is going to blow your mind with the things he has prepared for you. If you are willing to trust him and wait until he's ready to bless you. I have a friend who witnessed her friends, people she helped, even her own children own their own home and attain financial security before her. But she continued to trust God. She tithed. She sowed. She had others who were in need and she confessed the word of God. In the end, she came out on top debt free and she didn't play no lotto and living in a bigger and a better home. Trust in the Lord and do good and you shall inherit the land. Glory to God. As I said, he almost lost his faith and confidence in God's deliverance and salvation. When he saw the wicked put on violence as clothing, they were always looking for prophets and did not control their selfish desires. They made fun of others and spoke wickedly of oppressing others. Oh, he was hurt over the robbery of the wealthy taken away. What little the poor had. Hallelujah. Asaph was angry with the Pharaoh-like employer who oppressed the needy by paying them on just wages. He was disgusted with Samaritan-like judges who gave unfair judgments in court to the poor and helpless and the wicked walked away with the victory that belonged to the righteous. Asaph had forgotten God's promise. I will never fail thee nor forsake thee. Hallelujah. Listen to me. Like Asaph we grapple with God's lack of immediacy uh, in judgment uh, and his patience in punishing the wicked. Uh, Ecclesiastes 8.11 says uh, because sentence against an evil work uh, is not executed speedily uh, therefore the heart of the sons of men uh, is fully set uh, in them to do evil. Uh, Nahum 1.3 says uh, the Lord is slow to anger greatly patient and great in power and will by no means leave the guilty on punisher. I want you to know today uh, in spite of all the unjustness uh, injustices that you have gone through, uh, all the unfair things, all the robbery uh, surely there is a future and your expectation will not be cut off God's promise to avenge your enemies uh, and to give you justice uh, in Luke 18 uh, verse 1 to 6 Seven still stands. It is still in effect. Hallelujah. Jesus said uh, there was a judge in a certain town uh, who had no fear of God uh, or respect of man. Uh, and there was a widow in that town uh, and she kept coming to the judge and saying, uh, give me my right against the man uh, who has done me wrong. Uh, and for a time he would not. Uh, but later he said to himself, uh, though I fear not God uh, or have respect for man uh, because this widow is a troubler to me, uh, I will give her her right for if not I will be completely tired out by her frequent coming and then Jesus said to his disciples he said this is the meaning of the parable will not God do right in the cause of his saints who cries to him day and night hallelujah those he bears long with those who oppress us and steal for us I say to you that God will quickly speak do right in our cause. I tell you that God will avenge the wicked speedily. Amen. The Bible tells us he gave Jezebel time to repent. And when that time was up, Jezebel was a dead woman. Just as God compensated the Israelites and paid them for 430 years that all the pharaohs robbed them of their wages. Uh, he's going to do the same thing for you uh, by supernatural Hallelujah. means. Hallelujah. 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 Literally, God will cause men to give into your bosom. Uh, even people that you do not know. 
I want you to know that four times uh, in the 23 years that I've been here, uh, God has used someone to give me uh, $1,000. Uh, he will cause people to give, uh, but you've got to believe uh, so that there will be a performance uh, and be reminded uh, that God will spread a table before you uh, in the presence uh, of those who can't back your wages, uh, those who borrowed your money and won't pay it back, uh, those who cheated you through deceptive uh, business practices, uh, and they will know uh, that it is God who has done it. Hallelujah. Psalm 126 verse 1 says, uh, when the Lord uh, turned again the captivity of Zion, uh, we were like them that dreamed. He's going to do it. He's going to do it. He's going to do it. If you believe God, the perplexity is not only in your mind, but it is bound to happen. Taking into account all the evil he witnessed, is have concluded uh, surely I've cleansed my heart in vain and uh, washed my hands in innocent uh, I get nothing but trouble all day long uh, every morning brings me pain uh, oh my god uh, Asa felt uh, that he was living holy for nothing uh, how many of us have found ourselves uh, in the same ignorant position as Asaph uh, when we look at what we currently have uh, as opposed to having all that we really need in God and from God on a daily basis. You know that there's some rich people out there. They can't even eat the kind of food you eat. They can't eat fried food. If they eat it, my God, call 911. It's an emergency. They can't eat ice cream. They can't eat all of the delicacies. They like to eat a banana. They like to suck on a strawberry. But they can't have it. They have the money to buy the vineyard. But they can't enjoy what is on the vine. When be low, hallelujah. Hallelujah. At the, 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 the ungodly, uh, we are ignorant. Uh, we have to look uh, at what uh, we have. Uh, we have all that we need already. Uh, God has provided. Uh, are you hearing me by the Holy Ghost? Uh, in spite of what you're waiting for. In spite of your new, late new Year's resolution. Uh, in spite of what you tell God you want. Uh, all that you have needed. Uh, the good hand of God has provided it. Uh, I've proven that in my own life. Uh, God gives us what we really need. Uh, sometimes what we want uh, is to consume it upon our own loss. Uh, he's given us. Uh, you wanted somewhere to live. You got it. Uh, hallelujah. You wanted a vehicle to drive. Uh, you got it. Uh, you wanted the food. Uh, you've got it. Uh, hallelujah. Many of us have found ourselves uh, in the same position of Asaph. Uh, when we look at what we call currently have uh, are supposed to have in, uh, all that we really need in God uh, and from God on a daily basis. Uh, which of us uh, can truly accuse God uh, of being neglectful or of making promises he won't fulfill? Uh, I want you to stand and raise your hand. Uh, in other words, uh, when you look at what the people of the world have uh, and love some point after it uh, as if God has not provided for us here and has already prepared uh, for us when we leave here. Uh, we think the same thoughts of Asaph uh, and some of us act on it to our regret. Yeah. 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 The key thing that we fail to understand in all the discomforts and the distresses of life all the abuse and unfairness Glory. Is that God uses hardships to accomplish Glory. His will in us and for yes. us? Yes. That is what God is really yes. getting to, yes. you know. Yes. Yes. In other words, Glory. the difficulties of life are a means through which God transform our souls. Yes. So, yes. Oh, if yes. you could see where Jesus yes. brought me from yes. to yes. where I am today. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory. It's the difficulties of life uh, that God used to bring about spiritual yes. growth uh, yes. and to equip us with humility uh, yes. and the wisdom needed yes. to handle the Glory. spiritual promotion yes. and the Hallelujah. material and financial prosperity Glory. he has prepared for yes. us. Yes. Yes. You know how many yes. believers are walking around like a peacock yes. just because they have a Calvin Klein bag? <laughs> you know how many people behave as if they really made it? Just because 
when they open their purse now, you know, they can see a little hundred dollars. I always like to look in people's purses when they're going in, and you know, they have the array, the hundreds, the fifty, the twenty, the tens, the fives, and you can't see a one. And I go, God, I know one of these days you're going to give me a purse like that. Hallelujah. Oh, glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, I said, carry the little West Indian thing that you're pushing here. You know, <laughs> if I have twenty dollars, I'm really holding it big, you know, that kind of stuff. But in spite of that, uh, all that I need, the hand of God has provided. All that I need, uh, the hand of God has provided. When I go in the bathroom to do my hygiene, it's there. When I go to the mirror to do my face, it's there. The lipstick is there. The foundation is there. All of this color is already there. You know, the stocking is there. Whatever you need, the outfit is there. The costume jewelry is there. The wig is there. All that you need, the hand of God has provided. The metro card is there. When you're going to the kitchen, you can find a tin of milk, a tin of corned beef, a tuna, a sardine, some crackers, and you can find some juice. Isn't the Lord good? An apple. And a grateful Shabbat the Lord. He has kept his promise. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Look, when I become rich, 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 I don't want no fancy cooking, you know. I don't want no caviar and eating nobody eggs and nobody this and nobody that. I want somebody that can do me some good, you know, red beans and rice and some real good hot steel. Yes, some steamed on. vegetables, you, yes. you know, with a slice of sweet potato and some nice steam, uh, you know, a snapper thing on the side uh, and some good old time original lemonade. That's the good eating. I don't want no architect with a 16 inch plate and he go in the kitchen with some dye and do that uh, and then bring me a spot of this and a spot of that like he's showing me the plans uh, to a house. Uh, no, when God bless you excessively, uh, you want to see the food on the plate. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. 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 The writer of Psalm 119, verse 71 said, It is good for me that I've been afflicted, uh, that I may learn your statutes. Uh, in other words, the psalmist was very impressed and overjoyed with the spiritual benefits uh, he had derived from his afflictions or the storms of life uh, and in learning the word of God. So don't look at what people have. Uh, God is taking you to where the goodness is. Uh, listen, uh, even when the children of Israel crossed Jordan, they stopped at a place called Gilgag and God said it's circumcision time before you can possess the blessing I've got to do something and they were circumcised Gilgag means you're rolling away and before we can get to the next level before we can get to prime before we can get to super and supreme we've got to be circumcised in heart circumcised in soul and circumcised in spirit we've got to have clean hands and a pure heart. We've got to live the life that God could shower us with blessings like he did with David who had a heart that says, who can I bless? Is there anybody left from Saul's family that I can do good to? God is looking for people with good hearts to bless. Amen. Hallelujah. The one good thing that Asaph did in all of this is he went into the house of God. He said, look, my feet are shaky mm -hmm. and I'm beginning to doubt God. Yes. I've seen a lot of things by God. I've been in his presence. Yes. Yes. I'm going to church. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. As I said, I felt this way uh, yes. until I went into the sanctuary yes. of God. Oh, yes. oh, and the Lord showed me the end of the wicked oh, and the rich that I was jealous of. He said, surely you have set them in slippery places. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. This phrase denotes the uncertainty and instability of the things they have. In other words, it doesn't matter how prosperous they are presently. It is a condition of uncertainty. I want you to have ears to hear. It doesn't matter if it goes on for 20 or 30 years. It is a condition of uncertainty from which they will soon fall into ruin because their prosperity 
is not one uh, of permanent stability. Uh, over the years, we've heard uh, of celebrities and millionaires uh, who've lost all their wealth uh, and were living meagerly lives. Uh, Paul said to Timothy uh, in 1 Timothy 1, 6, 17, uh, he says, charge them that are rich in this world. Uh, that they be not high minded nor trusting on certain riches but in the living God who gives us richly all things to enjoy as I said I was crazy Yes. God has set them in slippery places. Uh, I said there, they said uh, that he saw the wicked branch out uh, like a green bear tree, uh, yet he passed away. Uh, he lost everything he had. Uh, the store wasn't there instead of the store. Uh, it was now a condominium. Uh, it was now a hospital. Uh, I told you what the Lord said. Uh, hallelujah. He can't destroy anything uh, that is not built up. Uh, and everything that looks like wealth uh, is not wealth. Uh, it is possible judgment uh, we will only know in the end uh, I remember sometime last year there was a certain individual that said uh, that God didn't do it uh, it wasn't God it was a prayer yeah. uh -huh, uh -huh. remember that yeah. okay let me continue uh, yeah. the apostle and pride didn't yeah. they ha 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 oh, satire. the bible says uh, he has set uh, them in slippery places uh, hallelujah then he said you cast them down to destruction uh, the end of the wicked uh, will demonstrate the justice of God when they are brought down or fall down or humbled by being removed from their high stations to a very late low state just like Nebuchadnezzar was and sometimes we don't pick up in the news when you heard this person is no longer and some people rush to say I resign you know to kind of to, 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 to shield the level of embarrassment but judgment has come. Yeah. Judgment has come. Yeah. They're trying to save face. Yeah. They're trying to cushion the fall. Yeah. But you can't cushion the fall yeah. that God has marked you for. Yeah. The promotion comes neither from the east yeah. nor from the west yeah. nor from the south. Yeah. But God is a judge. Yeah. He puts down one and sets up another. Yeah. Glory be to Jesus. Esau goes on to say oh how they are brought to desolation yeah. as in a moment in other words, suddenly and unexpectedly, destruction comes upon them uh, as it came upon Pharaoh at the Red Sea uh, and Sennacherib's army uh, before Hezekiah and Jerusalem. Uh, for Sennacherib said, uh, Hallelujah, what is this confidence uh, that you have that you wouldn't surrender to me? Uh, have you heard about me? Have you seen what I've done to your sisters? Uh, but God showed him uh, he was brought down to desolation uh, in a moment. Uh, he goes on to say they are utterly confused consumed with terrors. Uh, literally they perish uh, or are destroyed by terrible things uh, like the Egyptians uh, who God poured out uh, the ten plagues upon uh, or the Philistines uh, who captured the ark uh, and were smitten by boys. Brethren, uh, there's nothing today uh, to envy the sinner man for. Uh, tell me what he has uh, that you don't have over yonder. Uh, if you haven't gotten it here, uh, remember what Abraham said to the rich man, he called him son. He said, Son, <laughs> Father Abraham had many sons. Son, in life you had it all. Yeah. You had your chariot, yeah. Yeah. you had all your good food, yeah. you had health, yeah. you had everything you needed. Yeah. He was laying at his feet, yeah. his body was full of sores, yeah. and all the leftovers you didn't want, all the scraps. I remember as a hungry, starving child, but thank God it never happened to me. There was this neighbor that when her sons came in from work and eat, then the food that they left over, she would boil it together in a plate, and sometimes you would see meat that was bitten. Somebody bite it and then won't anymore. And she'll come to the window and knock. Her. And all the other hungry children will come and take that good food. It was good food, but it was a scratch. And that is what Lazarus had. But now Abraham said, look at him. He's walking. Hallelujah. His body is clean and whole. He's in paradise. He has everything he needs that make him happy. Glory be to Jesus. There's nothing to envy the wicked of. There's necessary uh, divine encounter brought Esau back to his right mind. 
uh, both physically and spiritually. Uh, he says in verses 21 and 22, he said, my heart was grieved uh, and I was vexed in my mind. Uh, I was so foolish and uh, ignorant. Mm. My God, mm. yeah. my God. Until I went to the foolish and ignorant. And then he begins to make a vow. Oh, shit. He says, nevertheless, from now on, I hear Saf. I'm continuing with you, Lord. No more shooting off at the mouth, murmuring, doubting, and thinking of backsliding. My heart is fixed. You hold me with your right hand. You have taken hold of my life completely. You are able to keep what I commit to you. You will guide me with your counsel. For you are great in counsel and mighty indeed. And afterward you will receive me in glory. Who have I in heaven but you? And there's none upon the earth that I desire besides you. God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. It is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord that I may declare all your works. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. God's word to you tonight is Thank you for your word. Surely there is a future and your expectation will not be cut off. Are you hearing me say? Surely there's a future. Luke 1 20, the Lord says, My words are of a kind which will be fulfilled in the appointed and proper time. You see, the problem we have is, is that when we look with our eyes at what people have. And what we don't have, mm -hmm. we think that we are on the losing end. Yeah. Oh God, you yeah. know, but when you are doing mathematics, mm -hmm. and there are certain formulas, A squared plus 2Y in brackets, plus 6, brackets again, or parentheses as you call it, plus 2K, plus 3, 2. <coughs> if you only do what is in this bracket, and that bracket, and you don't factor in the middle, you don't get a correct answer. And that is why we are not seeing things per, per, in the right perspective. We are not factoring in that we are pilgrims passing through. Yes, yes, yes. We are just occupying yes, until he comes. Come when he comes and calling us home or the rapture. Amen. And so when we don't factor in that, we say, I don't have this. They have all of that. And you forget the middle. Mm -hmm. It's when people look at my situation mm -hmm. and they don't factor in God. They say nothing can happen for her. Mm -hmm. Come on. But God says my word yes. is of a kind yes. that will be fulfilled at the yes. appointed and proper time. Yes. In Luke 1 37 he says, for with God nothing is ever impossible and no word from God shall be without power or impossible of fulfillment. What has God said to you? What has God promised you? Why are you doubting? For surely there is the future and your expectation shall not be cut off. Surely, not perhaps, maybe so. Surely, and God is talking about in this life. In Jeremiah 32, the Lord said to Jeremiah, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? And Jeremiah responds, response, Our Lord God, behold, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and outstretched arm. There is nothing too hard for you. If God so freely give us Jesus, will he not also with him give us all things? Every word that I've spoken to you will not return to me void of fulfillment save God. Every promise that I've made to you I will bring to pass in their times and season safety Amen. Surely there is a future and your expectation will not be cut off. I want you to stand with me in this anointing. Glory. I want you to stand quickly we are headed towards midnight. And I have to give up the pulpit. Surely there's a future and your expectation will not be cut off. I want you to listen to me clearly. If you have begun to doubt a better tomorrow, if you have begun to believe the report of the wicked, 
everything evil lawyers tell you yes. everything evil companies tell you they don't want to pay you and give you the benefits that you need if you begin to believe everything the doctors tell you I'm not telling you don't take medication but when God has spoken believe the report of the Lord are you hearing me if you have begun to doubt that life is going to be better if you have begun to think that you could only be blessed if you are married and have a husband working for lots of money if you've lost your faith and your trust in God if you've been thinking of quitting church God sent me tonight to tell you surely there's a future and your expectation will not be cut off I want to pray for you those of you in your homes wherever you are in the name of Jesus Christ I want to pray for you for the power of God is present to heal Father you said blessed is he or she that believe for there shall be a performance of the things told him or her right now in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for families I pray for every individual household I pray I pray for single women. You are a single woman. No husband. Nobody to take care of you but God. I pray for single parents. I pray for married couples. I pray for widows. I pray for divorced men and women. I pray for widowers. I pray for young people that are living on their own and are trying to make it. I've come tonight to tell you that life is not always going to be hard. Things are not always going to be tough. For the word of the Lord has spoken. It cannot return unto him void. The scriptures cannot be broken. For surely there will be an end. An end to your struggle. An end to your problem. An end to your heartbreak. An end to your loneliness. An end to your financial depletion. Surely there will be an end to every strain of COVID disease. Surely there will be an end to the injustice and the job. Surely there will be an end to persecution of your enemies. There will be an end, save God. There will be an end, save God. It's not me that is speaking. It is the Lord. It's the Lord God strong and mighty. And I believe it you tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. Mighty God release the anointing of breakthrough. Release the anointing of breakout. Some of you have got to break out of the box. You've got to break forth. In the name of Jesus Christ. Mighty God release the anointing. That destroys the curses. The witchcraft. The charismatic witchcraft. And the classical witchcraft release the power of God that destroy cyclic iniquities, chains and cycles, every hex, every chains, every vent, everything that has been fighting at you from the kingdom of darkness. It comes to an end in 2021 in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Father God, restore your faith in your people. Uh, that they can trust you uh, I decree and declare that the Holy Ghost uh, your helper, your paracletos uh, he's restoring your faith uh, he's refueling your faith uh, he's reigniting your faith uh, in the name of Jesus uh, you shall believe God uh, you shall hope in God uh, you shall trust in God uh, in the name of Jesus uh, in the name of Jesus come on Zion uh, reach out uh, reach out into this anointing uh, I want you to take it. I want you to take it. For the power of God is present to heal. The power of God is present to heal. The chain breaker is here. Your deliverer is here. Your shalom God. Nothing missing. Nothing broken. Nothing impaired. He's in the house. In the name of Jesus. Come on and grab hold of your future. Come on and grab hold of of the future you want for your son and your daughter, your sons and your daughter, your grandchildren, your daughter-in-laws, your sons-in-laws. Come on, God says, surely there's a future. And what you expect shall not be cut off. Come on and take it. A better life, a better life is coming. It's been promised by God. Come on and 
Take it, Raka Sandaya, Roko Sandara Bakaya, Raka Sandara Bakaya, Roko Sandara Bakaya. Change has come, change has come. We have been of the wicked, we have been of the proud. Those who don't want God, they don't have nothing. There's nothing in the Illuminati but curse, death, and destruction. But in God, there's joy and there's life, abundant life. Come on and take it. Come on and take it, God, I receive. I'm not going to be poor and broke. I'm not going to be a struggler. I'm going to be an investor. I'm going to buy good stuff. I'm going to have my own business in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm going to own property in the name of Jesus. I'm going to be elevated on the job. God is going to raise me up in the church in leadership to be a blessing. Come on and take it in the name of Jesus. I believe God. It doesn't matter what your struggle look like right now. It doesn't matter what your struggle look like right now. How long it's been going on? 15, 20 years? For surely there will be an end. Surely there will be an end. That said, God, there will be an end to it. For there's hope in your future. There's a hope in your future. And your expectation shall not be cut off. I believe the report of the Lord. I believe the report of the Lord. I believe the report of the Lord. Listen to me. You want to walk into 2022 with a great anointing upon your life. You want to go into 2022 with hope in your heart. Expect it from God. Forget about man. The arm of flesh fails. Come, God is responsible. He's liable for your success. For when he declared in Isaiah 9, that the government will be upon his shoulder. He was declaring that he's responsible for all that you need. Come on. God is responsible. Hallelujah. He wants you to hold him responsible for everything that he promised that he will do for you. Receive it now. 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 If you are going to be with your happy new year, if you are going to be with your blessed new year, you've got to finalize 2021. Come on. You've just got two more minutes to finalize 2021 and apprehend the future that God has prepared for you. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken that surely there will be an end. And your expectation, your expectation, your future will not be cut off. Robo Sikaya, Raka Sanda, Robo Sataya, Hayada Basie. God, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Every child, every child, college tuition in the name of Jesus, healthy and strong and protected in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God. Come on, finalize it. Tell God I believe. I'm not envious. I'm not covetous. I'm not murmuring and complaining. I'm contented. I am grateful. All that I need, you've already provided. Your goodness and mercy follows me. For daily, you loaded me up with benefits. How great is that goodness that you've laid up for those who trust you, who hope in you, and who believe in you, I believe. I believe for my son. I believe for my daughter-in-law. I believe for the unsaved. There's hope in the future. In your backslidden family. Your ungodly family. Your friends and loved ones. Come on and finalize 2021. I walk into 22. Shouting and rejoicing. We're going to sing that song. What shall I render? Unto the Lord for his benefits. When 2022 comes. Rakando Robo Satire. Rekando Robo Shantana Bakaya. Rekesando Robo Hakanda Come on and fight.
finalize just 30 more seconds come on and finalize lord i believe and there shall be a performance of the excessive abundance exceedingly and abundantly above all that i can ask or think i believe the report of the lord that surely there will be an end and my expectation will not be cut off because there's hope in my future we finalize, we finalize, we finalize, I believe, I believe, I'm not doubting anymore, I believe, I believe, we've got three minutes to midnight, come on and finalize, put your faith out there, put your faith out there, I believe the report of the Lord is going to be good for me in 2022, it doesn't matter what I hear over the news, I've got a word from God, I receive a briefing from heaven, I receive a download from heaven that tells me that there's hope in my future and my expectation will not be cut off, hallelujah, I praise you, 